I never do this. I don't like including screenshots in post-game videos because it's extra work and I'm lazy. I always do post-game videos with just the commentary and nothing else because I feel like the narrative is writing itself with my voice. But I wanted to showcase some tweets after this Vancouver Canucks and Dallas Stars game that in a way encapsulate how frustrating this goddamn game was. Here's what j -Pat went out there and said, look, I don't know if the Vancouver Canucks would have scored on the power play, but how the Heiskanen hit on Joshua can go unpunished only to see the Stars score a winner on a late power play is questionable at best, but the Canucks had three earlier power play opportunities and did nothing with them, so there's that too. Wyatt Arndt, the stanchion, said, yeah, what a stupid way to decide this game. Teddy Bluger, come on down, man. MVP for the Dallas Stars in this game. MV mother freaking P. Oh my God, what a terrible like way to end a good game. That was such a good game. Very exciting, very engaging. Lots of pace, lots of chances, lots of great saves, good opportunities either way, and it gets decided by the refs. And it's not even just the high skin and hit and the no call and the Teddy Bluger high stick and whatever. It was even earlier in the game, like five power plays for the Dallas Stars. And there was the should have been disallowed, maybe, who knows if it was a high stick or not, Jason Robertson tap that was called not a high stick that the Canucks eventually got themselves another penalty on because they challenged and they got it wrong. Like, what do you even say to that? What do you even say to that? You know, at the very least, the Canucks are not going through this in the postseason where they need a wake-up call on their power play. This power play was Dog water today. Terrible. And you know why? I'm going to say it's because of Pia Suter. I said this in the video earlier today. Pia Suter is not a power play option. He is not good enough to be an extra man on that unit. And I said it in the video. I was like, I don't feel comfortable with him there. He doesn't move the puck well. He doesn't inspire confidence. He makes panic plays and everybody can see it. They know he's not good enough to be in that spot. So like what put Connor Garland there? I don't know, try somebody else out. We saw a very good power play with this team earlier on in the year, but against a Dallas Star squad that is also fighting to clinch a playoff spot, that in which they did today because they won. Vancouver didn't get any points, so no clinching for them here tonight. Like, the fact is, I can appreciate how these games are giving the Canucks a little bit of a wake-up call where it's like, yeah, you guys gotta go. We heard the Rick talk at practice earlier from yesterday at UBC. The guy posted the YouTube video of Rick Tockett and the transcription of his comments. And he was telling his guys, you guys gotta go. You gotta focus. Some of you guys are not playing. Like, you know you need to do that. Like, I don't know. Like, one goal against on the Dallas Stars. I get it. Jake Ottinger was amazing tonight. Really great. Casey DeSmith, also awesome here. You could say that the Dallas Stars outchanced the Vancouver Canucks in this 3-1 victory. But in a game like this, man, like, uh, special teams, sure, they killed off a bunch of penalties. Debatably more penalties than they should have had killed off against them. But at the end of the day, it's a missed call from Miro Heiskanen on Dakota Joshua that should have been an interference or a trip or something. John Shorthouse was saying it, hey... There may be the makeup call, we may see the makeup call, but then there's no goddamn makeup call, and then it's Teddy Bluger for high sticking. He took two penalties in this game that were both so poorly timed, and the Dallas Stars are able to come back and win, seal the deal. Jamie Ben with the one time option. Jason Robertson getting himself the empty netter. Like, we didn't even talk about the rest of the damn goals, man. This is a frustrating game. Really frustrating. And I know the Dallas Stars fans are going to come in here and y'all are going to, you know, laugh at me for being angry about this. Oh, ca-sucks, ca-sucks, ca-sucks. Take that, ca-sucks. Y'all suck. Like, I get it, you know? You guys are good. You guys got a good team. What do you want me to say? You guys got a good team. If there's a seven-game series, Vancouver, Dallas, there's no team that's going to sweep that. Both teams, I thought, played very well tonight. But the way it was decided, with the referees not calling an obvious call and then calling one at the end there on Teddy Bluger, like, uh, Canucks shot himself in the foot, and the referees gave them the gun. How is that, eh? How is that? 
The Dallas Stars could have had a few more, honestly, if it wasn't for Casey DeSmith, but the same thing could be said about the Canucks and Jake Ottinger. Both goalies played well, but at the end of the day, it is Dallas with the 3-1 to one victory. Let's go out there and see some of the highlights here in this game. Dallas got the first goal, 1-0. It was Quinn Hughes in the box for high sticking. A lot of high sticking, you know? A lot of Canucks penalties with their sticks. Not good. Guys got to lay off on that. Quinn Hughes especially. He's been doing that a lot more lately. It's been very annoying. But this was the play where Jason Robertson knocked the puck down with a stick that was debatably high. And then the puck bounced itself in front. There was the play and then it was sent over for the cross crease and Rupe Hintz scored. They had a long lengthy review about this. And honestly, if you look at it, Jason Robertson and the point of contact that he had with the puck with the near shoulder... That was a high stick, but the thing is, Robertson's other shoulder that was farther away from the puck was a lot higher, and I guess they based the reference point off of that, plus the fact that Robertson hit the puck down with the heel of his stick and not the toe made it a lot easier to come to a non-conclusive verdict there, and in the event of non-conclusive verdicts, if you can't really see, oh, definitively, yeah, it's high, then they're not going to call it high. It's a one nothing game, it's whatever, the Canucks go shorthanded again because they end up giving the coach's challenge and it's not successful. Canucks end up killing that off, and then in the second, you have yourselves a few opportunities for them. Arshdi Baines drew a cross-checking penalty, and this is where the Canucks' first power play opportunity came to light. Pia Suter had a really good puck loose in the crease opportunity, and he just completely misses it. He doesn't bury after Hughes had that slap shot. The Canucks don't convert on this power play, but they do get themselves a goal just a little bit later. It's JT Miller. He gets off the bench, walks right in, and he hammers a one-timer after Connor Garland spinning and wheeling around down low, centers it out, and it's JT with the beautiful slap shot and the goal. Crowd roars for JT Miller, too. You heard the announcer on the PA. Scored by number nine, JT. And then the crowd just roared out, Miller! Oh, man. What an amazing feeling it must be for Miller's family to be able to see that night in and night out. As the game goes on, though, Arshdeep Baines draws another penalty, this one from Miro Heiskanen. Canucks to the power play once again. Pia Sutar had a one-timer in front, and he is not able to get it through Easy save, puck gets stopped, the penalty gets killed off. Ilya Mikheyev has himself a one-on-one -on -one chance with Ottinger, but he gets stopped. Teddy Bluger then quickly takes a cross-checking penalty. Stars get another power play, this one is killed off. It had Rupe Hintz go to the box for holding on the code of Joshua. Connects power play, that one was also killed. And I have here written in my notes that Suter is definitely the odd man out in that top unit. He does not have the same versatility nor effectiveness. It is very bad. Nikita Zadorov then went to the box with 142 left in the second for tripping. This penalty bleeds into the third period where the Canucks end up killing it off. It's a 1-1 game. We have ourselves about four minutes without any calls until Dakota Joshua and Mira Heiskanen get at it. Heiskanen pretty much interfered with Joshua right on the boards, and there was no call on that. Like... What a terrible play. What an absolutely terrible play. That was supposed to be a penalty. No call. There were a few good chances for Vancouver afterwards. Besser drove to the goal. Connor Garland had a rebound in front on a Hughes slap shot. Ottinger really good. You had Pia Suter who was taken down as well. The Canucks fans start to boo in the arena. But after all of these non-calls, you had Teddy Bluger with 3.28 to go. High sticking in front. Bad penalty, Ben scores in the power play, 2-1, to one. then empty net, Jason Robertson scores, 3-1. to one. Dallas Stars fans are being really snarky about it, and you know what? I don't blame you. It is what it is. Two good hockey teams going out there in a really tight game, and the referees decide to let one team get away with it and give the opposing team the penalties against. So much for makeup calls, eh? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Canucks and the Dallas Stars. I get it, you know, this is an angry video. Oh yeah, look at that, eh? He's kind of funny. I don't want to say I'm like kicking and screaming in the same way I was in that New York Rangers video from earlier in like October or whatever, but like, yeah, tough game. Very tough game, especially with the way it ended. Such entertainment, only to be stopped by the officiating. Teddy Bluger, man, MVP. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Ash Rose 99. And... Bye.